This is the Pythonic accountant, and today we're going to pit some of the most popular and most powerful models against each other. Um, but not only the most powerful version, but the slightly less powerful, but still really capable, faster models. So what I mean is GPT-4.0 is the currently the best model that OpenAI offers, but they also have a GPT-4.0 Mini, which is a much faster and less expensive model to use um, when you're using the API. And then you've got Claude that has Sonnet 3.5 and Haiku 3. So Sonnet 3.5 is the top model that Claude has. Haiku 3 is a much uh, less expensive and but still very capable and fast model. Um, and then finally, we're going to look at Google's Gemini advanced model. Uh, Google has another model as well that's not the advanced model that's faster, but for today, we're just going to compare the Gemini advanced. So what we're going to do is we've got these questions that I have prepared where I have the correct answer and an answer key. And I have these like grades ready to go and a calculation of the accuracy. And we're going to compare to see of these, let's see, 11, you know, eight different questions. How many questions, or nine questions, can't count. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, 11 minus two. <laughs> looks like I'm failing accounting today. Uh, let's see what kind of grades these get against each other. So the way we're going to do this is um, OpenAI allows you to compare two models against each other. So I'm just going to compare GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini. And I'll grab the answer and pull that into uh, the responses spreadsheet here so we can just see what kind of grade they're getting. And so we've got a yes here. The correct answer is yes. And they both say yes. So the question was, do debits equal credits, basically? This is a trial balance balance. And they're able to add up the debits, add up the credits, and they balance. And the answer is yes. So that's good. That's not, not too hard. I'm trying to give it an easy starting point. Let's uh, just make sure that Claude, Sonnet, and Haiku, and Gemini all get it right as well. And we'll plug those answers in. Answer yes. And now let's check the haiku. Hopefully haiku has the same answer. <laughs> that's funny. Haiku decided to go ahead and run some uh, Python code here, but that's fine. I'll allow it. And then Gemini. Let's see what you got, Gemini. Gemini advanced, rather. OK, so off to a good start. So, so far, all of these models are one for one. Now we're going to get a little bit more complex. Um, this one's one that I came up with just for fun to try to see if they are able to infer that uh, a portion of revenues should be recognized because the, the way this one's worded, I said, you're a helpful accounting assistant. You're reviewing journal entry prepared by an intern. Description is to record customer deposit for three month services contract for June, July, and August, 2024. Assume the services are performed evenly throughout the three month period. That's a key piece there. The date of the entry is June 30th, 2024, another key piece. So I'm trying to show like we're one third of the way through this already, guys. Um, the journal tree currently shows a debit to cash of 12,000 and a credit to accounts receivable of 12,000. So we know that's wrong, but what should the correct entry be? And so the options are debit cash, 12,000. They're all, uh, the first two are debit cash and the fourth one's debit cash. The third one's debit accounts receivable and debit cash. So trying to throw it off a little bit. But the correct answer is D, debit cash 12,000, credit service revenues 4,000 for the third that has been accrued or earned, and then credit customer advances 8,000. And so let's see what it is able to come up with. Open AI, going first. And they both came up with answer A, which is a good thought process because they're saying that we need to have uh, you know, a liability for the customer advances that have not been, been earned, but the problem is it missed the part that they've actually been earned uh, a third. Okay, let's see. We'll start with Haiku, and then we'll switch to uh, Sonnet 3.1. Okay, so Haiku says it's answer D, and that's great. Again, it used Python, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's actually that's smart that it used Python. But it knows I need to determine the portion of this that is um, actually uh, earned. And so it, it was able to calculate that out. All right, let's go now move to Sonnet and see what Sonnet says. Sonnet 
Sonnet's not using Python, but it doesn't need it. The math is not that hard. And it also comes up with uh, D. Finally, let's see what Gemini is able to come up with. Hmm. It just jumps to answer A. It doesn't give any thought process on it. Interesting. Okay. All right, so, so far, um, Sonnet 3.5 and, and Haiku 3 are in the lead here. That's pretty interesting. Uh, we're going to jump ahead in the video. I'm going to go ahead and answer the rest of these, and we'll jump ahead and see how they're doing. All right, so I finished going through and comparing uh, the rest of the questions. I ended up deleting one because I didn't like it. <laughs> I think it was actually wrong. But the uh, rest of the question, we have 10 total questions that we asked the models. And after going through, I'm actually surprised to see, uh, I shouldn't be surprised, that all three of these really, really advanced models, GPT-4.0, Sonnet 3.5, and Gemini Advanced, got the same grade. Um, granted, we're only asking 10 questions, so it'd probably get a little more accurate if we expanded. But they all got 87.5%. Um, so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I guess that's 9. Wait, why is that 87.5%? C3 through C10. Oh, it's not 10 questions. It is <laughs> eight questions. That makes more sense. So seven out of eight questions. I was like, that percentage doesn't work out. So seven out of eight questions right uh, by GPT-4.0, Sonnet 3.5, and Gemini Advanced. And then GPT-4.0 Mini and Haiku 3 also got the same score, even though they missed different questions. Um, they each missed uh, three out of eight. So I think that's pretty awesome, right? Like it shows that um, in all, all three of them, uh, it's, it's, oh yeah, not all three of them, uh, even the top models got the right, the same ones right versus wrong. So it really just kind of depends on the type of question. One thing I'll point out is in a previous video when I started introducing this concept of you know grading the models, I actually made, I made a mistake in one of the questions. I was not clear enough and I provided uh, an answer that I think the models may have gotten right even though I thought they got them wrong. And so the question was, uh, a bookkeeper is preparing a journal entry to correct a mistake made by an intern. The intern accidentally wrote off an accounts receivable balance of $5,000 directly to bad debt instead of allowance. The error happened before the year end closed, so the bookkeeper needs to correct it next year. This next part, it didn't specify previously, which was whether it was material or not, and that makes a difference. So if it's material to the financials, then they should record an entry to retained earnings because it's a prior period adjustment. If it is not material, then they should uh, record a reduction in the bad debt expense, even though it makes it a negative balance, it's not material, and that way it flows through to the current year income statement. It doesn't have to change last year's financials. And um, some of the models you know, got it right, some of the models got it wrong, so it really just kind of depended. But um, that's, uh, that's kind of the way it worked. So this was um, really fascinating, really interesting to me. I hope you enjoyed this as well. Stay tuned. We're going to do a lot more things like this where we're comparing these models and seeing how they perform with different accounting types of tasks. Uh, we didn't really categorize these yet, but what's interesting to me is as we start to look more at what the models are capable of, looking at it from a category standpoint, like, okay, some of these are debit credit type questions. Um, some of these are more like internal controls type questions like this one and fraud risk and knowing the segregation of duties. And so, you know, Sonnet 3.5 um, actually got that one wrong, surprisingly. But, you know, GPT 4.0 and Haiku, uh, did I flip those? No, no I'm curious. Because I thought that Haiku got this one wrong and Sonnet 3.5 got it right. So let's actually go back and check. Um, and that'll impact the grades. Hmm, human error. Okay, so let's let's actually look at our historical chats. Uh, let's see. This would have been accounting. Oh, it, it's. Um, is it this one? Nope, not this one. Let's just let's just ask it again. So Sonnet 3.5. I thought I thought that Sonnet 3.5 got this right. I think I just recorded it incorrectly. Yeah, because it went through and analyzed what each of the roles were. And it was like, okay, accounts receivable clerk. Yep, answer C. Okay. I flipped these. This should have been C. Sonnet 3.5 C. Wow. 
So I think Sonnet 3.5 may have gotten all of these right. OK, and then Haiku had A. Let's just double check. All right, so this actually changes the final analysis quite a bit and actually kind of makes sense. I've, I've heard and I've had my own experience that Sonnet 3.5 is just a little bit better than GPT-4.0. Not positive. Um, we'd have to do a lot more testing to really confirm. Oh, <laughs> of course. This time, uh, it got it right. That's really interesting. So answered C. So let's go ahead and give it credit since I redid it. So Haiku got um, 62.5, which is what I had before, even though previously Haiku got this question wrong. And again, that kind of goes to show like if they answer the, if they provide different answers each time, it's also not great. So it's important to test these multiple times. But so, okay, final score here. Now that we've redone this a little bit, you got GPT-4.0 and Gemini got seven out of eight questions right. Sonnet 3.5 got eight out of eight right. And the uh, slightly kind of less powerful models, but fast and fairly capable, GPT-4.0 Mini and Haiku 3, they still got over 50% right, uh, which is good, not amazing. Um, but one thing we have not even started to look at yet was fine tuning these and giving examples and adding capabilities, maybe even access to a retrieval augmented generation, which would allow these tools to get even smarter from an accounting standpoint. So I'm, I'm impressed. This is not, not bad at all. And the crazy thing to think about is there's GPT-5 coming out at some point and, you know, in the similar models from uh, Claude. By the way, Sonnet 3.5 that's Claude's like middle model. So they, they really have, Opus is the, previously was the top model. So Opus in Claude 3 was the top model. 3.5, Sonnet's the first one to be Claude 3.5, but when Claude 3.5 Opus comes out, that's gonna be more capable than Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And Claude 4 is gonna be even more. So it, this is where I wanna be focused on, right? Is understanding what's the edge of these capabilities. So we need to start asking Sonnet 3.5 some harder questions so we can get that grade below 100% because that will be the true way for us to tell when these models are getting smarter and smarter. So um, stay tuned for the next one. We're going to try to come up with some harder questions to stump these models and then see how they do. Thanks. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you at the next one.